We're now going to take a look at data flow diagrams and basically what they're used for and how they differ from context diagrams. So essentially a data flow diagram is used to model information system. They provide greater detail than a context diagram as they display each process involved within a system as its own individual circle. So the end result will have multiple circles or multiple processes. A DFD also has a shape for data source, which represent where data is either sent to or retrieved from, such as a database. Data stores are represented as a three-sided rectangle shape. So here's just an overview of the symbols used in a data flow diagram and how they may be used. So once again, we have our external entity. They enter data into the system. It goes in process one. It may then go to a second process. After this process, data may be stored in the data store, and then it may be retrieved more data, okay, in order to do its calculation. And then once data has been processed again at process two, it is sent back to the external entity as information. So let's analyze all these shapes. Once again, we have our external entity, which basically is the person or user or individual or something exterior to the system that is sending data to the system or retrieving data from the system. We have our process. And in this case, we have multiple processes all representing the different steps within the system. Okay, and unlike a context diagram, we have more than one circle in this scenario. We have our flow line once again, and the line itself is labeled along with the data that it's either sending or information that's being received. Okay, and finally we have our data store, which is a location where data is saved to or retrieved from, such as a database. So, Let's look at our basic calculator scenario again. So once again, two numbers are entered into the system. The user gets to decide whether to add, subtract, multiply or divide and at their discretion. And then we want a result displayed. So here's our user. They're putting number one and number two into the system. The system first records these numbers as variables. Once the numbers have been recorded, they are stored in the memory of the calculator. The next step, we need to say which calculation the, the user wants to use. Once again, this needs to be recorded in the memory. And so now we have the numbers stored and the calculation both stored in the memory. Now that we have this information, number one and number two and the calculation type can all be used in another process called perform calculation. And essentially, this is where the calculation would be performed. The system then needs to show the calculation result to the user. So display result and they essentially view the result. So I hope this gives you a bit of an understanding of how data flow diagrams are used. Essentially breaking down the system into a number of steps, as well as showing data stores where data is sent to or retrieved from within the movement of data throughout the system. I hope this also emphasizes how it's different to context diagrams and basically goes into a lot more depth, okay, in the flow of data within the system.